Hi, virtual students. Uh, this is the problem we didn't get to in class that I wanted to send you. It's a base. And the first thing that's really confusing about it is figuring out that it's a base. It's a solution of KIO3. It's not a solution of HIO3. Don't be confused by the fact that they give you KA for HIO3. It's not HIO3. It's IO3 minus, which is the conjugate base of HIO3. In a minute, we're going to go over how you recognize acids and bases. So if you couldn't see that that was IO3 minus and that it's a base, we'll get back to that. It is a base, which means it's going to combine with water. And it will steal an H plus from water, become HIO3 the conjugate acid, and it'll leave OH minus behind. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and icebox this. Uh, this will be 2 molar initially, minus X. And we don't care about water. I'm not even going to put anything there. And then at the end, I'm going to have X of these and X of these. I just did the whole ice box in one line. Instead of I, C, and e ing I just went straight to the E. <laughs> At equilibrium, this is what I've got. And then I need a K to go with this. And the first place that people might make a mistake, well, the first place is they're going to accidentally think they have an acid, so be careful. And then you're going to want to use this Ka, but this is not the equation for Ka. And you might be asking yourself, oh, why did they give us Ka then? A lot of times there are tables and tables and tables of Ka, but there aren't tables and tables and tables of Kb. So um, IO3 minus might not be a Kb we can look up easily, but we can look up the Ka of its conjugate acid pretty easily. But we can figure out Kb from here. Remember, Kb times Ka is just Kw, and Kw is a constant, 10 to the negative 14th. And I'm going to put numbers in there, in my calculator. Yeah. Let's see, this is 1. E, e. Hmm, where's my plus minus here? Negative 14. I've just added um, a sig fig there, but at the end, remember, you should only have two sig figs. And this is going to be equal to x squared over 2, assuming that 2 is much, much larger than x. Probably safe assumption. And then I'm going to solve for x. And again, this is where you can make a mistake easily. Whenever you're doing one of these problems, when you get to this point, go back to your ice box and make sure you know what X is. In this case, X is not H plus. I can't get the pH right away here. Instead, this is the OH minus. And I can only get the pOH by taking the log of it. And that means our pH is going to be... Okay, and now uh, remember, two sig figs here and here means two decimal places in your pH. How can you tell when you have an acid or a base? Well, there are the really obvious acids, the ones that have H's out front. I'm going to do kind of a general formula for them, and then I'm going to put down some examples. So HX or H2X, those are kind of general formulas for acids. And some examples would be things like HCl, HIO3, H2SO4. Now there are some um, bases that are associated with those acids, conjugate bases. After those acids at uh, lose their H+, plus. what's left over is their conjugate base, if they are a weak acid, not strong acids. They won't work. So the weak acid, it's um, negative ion, 
is a base. So IO3 minus, that's a base we just looked at. F minus would be a base. But if they're the conjugates of a strong acid, like Cl minus, this guy is not going to take an H plus. As soon as he takes an H plus, he becomes HCl, and HCl is a strong acid, and it just loses the H plus again. So this one will not work. If it's the negative ion that's in a strong acid, it's not going to be a base. Some other kinds of acids are uh, things that end with COOH, like acetic acid. And the conjugate base of that would be XCOO minus. Organic acids like this are always weak acids, so the negative ion that goes with them is always a conjugate base. Let's see. And then we have those uh, acids and bases that have NH in them. Remember the neutral compound, I'll put a general term, X and H, some number of H's, who knows how many, let's call it Z. That's sort of a general one. Um, NH3 is the most famous example. And then this thing, I don't even know what it's called, methylamine, I think. That's a base. They always end with NH and they're neutral. Then if they gain an H+, plus, that's the conjugate acid over here. I'm just going to call that a different letter. <laughs> One thing that can be confusing with the NH bases is sometimes there are H's out here in this X term. Just ignore them. They're not really involved here. It's, uh, it's actually easier to do these if you just remember this one. And I think we've looked at it often enough that maybe you can remember it. Ammonia, NH3, is the base. And its conjugate acid is the ammonium ion NH4+. Uh, let's see if we've forgotten anything. Hmm. I don't think so. There's the strong bases, things like this. But just like the strong acids, they don't really have a conjugate. One thing that you might want to add to this table, because it can be confusing, is these ions are never found by themselves. I can't go back to my chemical cupboard and find a bottle of F- ions. Instead, I'm going to find salts that have F- in them. So, you know, this is really probably KF or um, NAF. But I wouldn't write this whole salt in the equation. If you're adding Kf to water and you want to find the pH, I would just take the F minus ion out of it and do this equation. Because if you put the K in there, it's just a spectator ion really, and it'll make you confused. It's hard to tell what's going on. If this is a base, it's going to pull an H plus off of the water. And on the other side, I'll get HF, and I'll be left with OH minus. That's easy to understand that it's a base. If you try to put the K in there, it just confuses everything. So uh, I would stick to just using the negative ion by itself. But in the problem, they're likely to tell you, oh, sodium fluoride, uh, six molar solution, what's the pH? So you just have to know to ignore the sodium. Metal ions are neutral along with the negative ions from strong acids. Maybe we should make that part of the poster down at the bottom. You might want to add that neutral ions. So all the metal ions and then 
all the negative ions that come from strong acids. They're the only neutral things, really. There's not a lot of them. You could probably list all of them. They're going to be very similar to your first poster, the one that lists the strong acids and the strong bases. So these are just the... Um, the metal ions are kind of like the positive ions from the strong bases, and then these negative ions are the negative ions from strong acids. They're neutral. And, you know, you're going to get the same sort of thing here. The ammonium ion is never going to be by itself. It's going to be like ammonium chloride or something. And you should recognize, oh, it's got ammonium in it. That's that positive NH ion. It's an acid, a weak acid. And the Cl- is just a spectator. It's neutral. And same up here with acetate. You might have sodium acetate. I shortened it up there. <laughs> so, uh, that's it. I would make this poster, try to come up with your own examples just to help you process it a little bit. And it will really help you out. The hardest part of these acid base problems is figuring out what you have at the beginning when they give you the problem. Is that an acid? Is that a base? Is it weak? Is it strong? Once you've got that figured out, you should know what to do.